How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne and this is Deck Writing, my channel all about the Steam Deck. In today's video, I've got four topics to cover. The first one is that the Steam Deck OLED just caught up with the original Steam Deck LCD. Second on the list, Final Fantasy 16 is officially coming to PC and there's a demo out now, but unfortunately it looks like the game is too big for the Steam Deck. And finally, if you break your Steam Deck, all hope is not lost. You could just turn it into a mini PC. All right, let's jump into this first news story here that's all about an update that the Steam Deck OLED just got that I honestly didn't even realize it needed. So if you didn't know, Valve officially supports Windows on the Steam Deck, but it's not the best experience. I talk about it a lot here on the channel. If you want to install Windows on the Steam Deck, you essentially have two choices. You can go through a really complicated process to partition your drive and dual boot it, or you can just wipe your Steam Deck completely and install Windows as the base operating system. There is a third option. It's not the best. You can install Windows onto a micro SD card, but the amount that Windows Windows accesses that SD card will definitely shorten its life. And I personally noticed that over time, Windows gets slower and slower and slower. And as the SD card gets hotter and hotter, it actually slows down in real time. So while yes, it is kind of a great little stopgap while we wait for dual booting support on the Steam Deck to become official, it's not necessarily the best option. And with how expensive micro SD cards are, I would say it's definitely not worth the risk to fry your SD card. But nonetheless, Valve is a great company when it comes to actually supporting what people want to do on the Steam Deck. We've seen millions of cases where people do things with mods or they download things in Decky Loader and then Valve turns around and makes it an official feature, which is great. So they also include Windows drivers to make sure all of the hardware on the Steam Deck, like the Bluetooth chip, the Wi-Fi chip, uh, the audio drivers, all of that stuff works out of the box if you install these drivers that they include. Now, I honestly didn't know that they didn't include them for the Steam Deck OLED up until last week, but yeah, it looks like, uh, you can officially install Windows on the Steam Deck OLED with drivers from Valve that'll officially support Windows, which is great. The reason I honestly didn't know this is because the only time I really ever have messed around with Windows on the Steam Deck was back when the Witch Queen was out for Destiny 2, like when that was the main expansion. So pretty much in the first year of the Steam Deck's life because I wanted to play Destiny 2 when I went to Chicago to look at wedding venues with my wife. And the only way to do it at the time because the ROG Ally wasn't out would be to bring my MacBook that I use for editing and also bring my gaming laptop, which I really didn't want to do. So I installed Windows on a micro SD card, only downloaded Destiny 2 to that micro SD card and used it as a de facto Destiny 2 sort of install. Even though I wouldn't totally recommend installing Windows in the first place, I gotta be honest, Destiny 2 ran great. It was like a 30 FPS experience at medium settings, pretty much across the board. I didn't even have to use any upscalers or anything like that. So I was running it at 800p medium with no upscale and it was a completely locked 30 frames per second. I know people out there don't like 30 FPS. They'd prefer 40 or at the very most 60 FPS, but that's just unrealistic with so many AAA games on the Steam Deck. And to get it to that point, you have to drop the settings so low that the experience is degraded, in my opinion, with the graphics being as bad as they are to get to that 60 FPS experience. So I've just given in. I've seen the light that 30 FPS consistency to me is preferable to 40 FPS with bad graphics or 60 FPS with bad graphics. So like, yeah, with Destiny 2, I kept it locked to 30 FPS. The most interesting thing about this entire news story is it kind of presents a pattern that I've noticed where Valve, whenever they're going to do a major feature drop or something with the Steam Deck, they either allow something to leak out or they include something in an update that's very small. And then a week later or so, we get a big update that includes a lot of these features. So like a couple weeks ago, when they knew they were going to do some interviews with The Verge and let them know that they were going to support the ROG Ally with SteamOS 3.0 officially, they included a small little feature in a beta update that included a little note about you know, supporting the back buttons for the ROG Ally. So that does a good job drumming up interest in the community, gets people excited. So after that, Valve follows the breadcrumb trail up with a one-two punch interview with The Verge usually because they like talking to them a lot for some reason, even though the whole deadlock situation just happened. And then they reveal exactly what they're working on to get the information out there. I think it's really smart. It's a cool way to get people interested in specific topics when it comes to the Steam Deck, especially if they're ones that people have been waiting for for a long time, like being able to dual boot Windows. And it's a good way to kind of nip questions in the bud, right? Like when you include these little features like the back button support for the ROG Ally, it obviously brings up a ton of questions from the community, like are they going to support SteamOS 3.0? They can answer those questions very quickly, very effectively, but then they can 
also kind of spread out from there and grab different questions that are related to it to give people a little bit of a roadmap without fully committing to something and missing a deadline, right? Like they only come out and talk about stuff when it's pretty close to becoming reality. So hopefully we don't have long to wait for SteamOS 3.0 to hit the ROG Ally. I personally don't think I'm going to install it on my Ally X just because I like having a Windows device that can play Windows games that work better on Windows because there are a few, a lot of easy anti-cheat supported games like Call of Duty and of course Destiny 2 are better on the ROG Ally X pretty much objectively because you can't play them on the Steam Deck unless you install Windows and then in the case that you do install Windows, the games run a lot worse on the Steam Deck. So it's kind of nice having this little handheld off to the side as sort of insurance that I can play the games I want to play even if the Steam Deck doesn't support them. But 99% of the time, I'm on the Steam Deck. I've been playing a ton of Diablo 4 lately. I'm very deep into Season 5. Anyway, that brings us to the second news story here. This is like the worst kept secret in gaming, but Final Fantasy 16 is coming to PC around September. And it's cool because it's the complete edition of the game. But not only that, it's only going to be 50 bucks. Now, this was a game that I've been curious about on PC, mainly because I played it when it came out on my PS5 for my channel PS Ready. And I was immediately confronted with the fact that this game is too big for even the PlayStation 5. It has a performance mode and a quality mode, but neither of them are consistent experiences. If you didn't know, like this game lets you turn into the summons from other Final Fantasy games and they're like giant bombastic kaiju style boss fights. They're called icons in this game. And in the performance mode, you're going anywhere from like 30 FPS all the way up to 60. So I switched it to quality mode. And even that is not a locked 30 FPS. When you start to do some of the big icon fights where you're taking over the entire map to do these kaiju style battles, you'll see the frame rate drop into the low 20s, which is obviously not great. So yeah, I know the PS5 is pretty underpowered compared to most people's PCs out there, but it's still more powerful than the Steam Deck. So I was really curious if this game would be able to run on the Steam Deck pretty much at all. And it's not a pretty picture. So a lot of people out there, myself included, have tried out the free demo. And even at the lowest settings, you're never going to be able to hit a rock solid 30 FPS. If you use FSR 3.1, you can't use frame generation because it just doesn't work for some reason. And even at its highest performance setting with FSR upscaling enabled and everything like that, you're going to be dropping into the high 20s, which is irritating. And if you go into quality with FSR 3, you're going to be playing at like 24 FPS. And when you use the high performance mode of FSR, the artifacting is insane. Like the blocky graphics are terrible. There's even artifacting and glitches and everything like that. It's not really optimized at all for the Steam Deck. I know my friend Bill over at the Nerd Nest spent some time yesterday when the demo came out, testing it out on different devices like the ROG Ally and the Legion Go. But like, this is just one of those games that I don't really think is made to be played on a handheld. The scale of the fights, the quick paced action, it kind of like deserves a PC that can run it at 60 FPS because if you didn't know, the combat is all action oriented. It's very inspired by Devil May Cry. You want the highest frame rate possible in these fights. And when you're playing the icon fights, you know, when you're a giant kaiju, that's something that should definitely be experienced on the biggest screen possible at the highest frame rate possible because on my OLED TV upstairs, which I think is like a 77 inch, it was absolutely phenomenal. Like even with the frame drops and everything like that and running at some lower settings and aggressive upscaling, it still was a really cool next gen experience last summer when I played it for the first time. And while they did patch it, I went back a few times to see if anything was really fixed. And for the most part, it's about the same as it was at launch. They fixed a lot of bugs. They fixed a major issue where when you would get to a certain point in the game, people's PS5s would overheat and shut down, which is good. That's not something that you want to have in a game, obviously. But from a performance perspective, they didn't really improve it drastically enough to where you're getting a consistent experience in quality mode or performance mode. So if you've got a beefy PC, try this demo out, see if you can run it at a lock 60. But uh, yeah, this might be a good candidate for uh, if you have a monitor that can run at 120 hertz playing at 40 FPS. I know that's crazy, but like Square Enix never optimizes their PC ports. So I felt like from the very beginning, hoping that this would be the magic bullet, the PC port versus the PS5 version. 
I just don't think that was realistic at all. I hope Square Enix improves their ports in the future because they've always been half-assed rush jobs. Like if you play Final Fantasy VII Remake on PC, you have to download mods to stop the game from stuttering and to perform well. So yeah, I'm hoping that Square Enix's new push into porting games over to PC results in better PC ports. But as of now, I feel like it's going to take a little bit. And at the very least, you should wait for some patches on PC before playing it on the Steam Deck. It's disappointing, but it's just the truth. And that brings us to the third news story of today's video, which is that if you break your Steam Deck and it's out of warranty, you are not technically out of luck. So we get to talk about one of my favorite video creators here on YouTube. His name is ETA Prime. Out of all the handheld channels, he's the one I discovered first and I have been a watcher of his stuff. And honestly, I'd be lying if I said he wasn't a little bit of an inspiration for me to even start a Steam Deck channel in the first place. So the story goes with this one that someone he knows who managed to break their Steam Deck to the point where it was non-functional ended up sending him the 512 gigabyte model and once he took it apart he realized that all of the core components like the motherboard the fan the apu the ram and everything like that all of that was just fine it was really just the screen and some other things that were broken so what he decided to do was tear it down and sort of reconstruct it as its very own little mini pc and give it a video output port and everything like that so you could plug in a keyboard plug it into a monitor plug in a mouse and then just see if it would work the centerpiece of this whole project was the motherboard of the Steam Deck. So that included the APU, it included the M2 storage, and it included the USB-C port. So essentially, it's pretty much everything you need to get this thing up and running off the ground. So because this monstrosity only had one USB-C port, of course, because it's the internals of a Steam Deck, what he ended up doing is finding a dock that had video out and USB-C out and a 65 watt power delivery where you could pass through a Steam Deck charger. And that just worked right out of the box. It basically just defaults into desktop mode, not desktop mode it defaults into like video output mode versus looking for a screen and it doesn't look like there's really any internal checks on the Steam Deck motherboard itself to say hey and do I have my controller do I have my screen do I have all the components that I need to run because this is a gaming PC at its very core it just works like a PC when you remove all those components which is honestly pretty awesome and because the software that the Steam Deck runs is essentially a Linux distro that then has a game mode of Steam on top of it all the stuff that you need to use different controllers is already built in. So you can just take advantage of Steam input, you can take advantage of resolution scaling, you can take advantage of pretty much everything that you can already use on the Steam Deck. So what it results in is a really cool desktop mini PC. And honestly, it just makes me really want Valve to actually create Steam machines. I, I think they will eventually, they've got to be working on some sort of hardware like this, but obviously they need to get SteamOS 3.0 shipped out the door. But knowing that they're working on supporting devices is like the ROG Ally, I'd honestly prefer if they kind of abandon that project and put all of the effort and time of porting SteamOS 3.0 to the ROG Ally into porting it to their own hardware with a better, more powerful PC. Like if you could figure out a way to run the Steam Deck's chip with a higher clock speed because it's in a desktop format, that would be cool. Or if they could figure out a way to make it work with a dedicated AMD GPU, that would be even cooler. Obviously you can do that with stuff like Bazite already, but yeah, it would be awesome to see a Steam Deck competitor from Valve that's not really a competitor, but more of a compliment to be a desktop style PC slash console that you could just plug into a keyboard, mouse, and monitor. Wouldn't that be awesome? I think the biggest reason we wait so long for this stuff is because the Steam Deck's original team was very small, and obviously they've built it out ever since then to be a little bit bigger, but they really seem to be only working on one little thing at a time versus scattershot technique where they would put a few people on a bunch of different projects and then ship the ones that are ready when they're done. It seems like they all kind of work on one thing at a time. And then when that feature is done, they ship it and then they move on to the next thing that people are excited to work on. So yeah, I really hope that Valve makes a stronger initiative going into the future into making better hardware or more hardware, right? Like we've heard they're working on a VR headset. I gotta be honest, while I am excited about it, I would much prefer them put more time and energy into a desktop style PC. But in the meantime, if you've got an extra Steam Deck laying around, like you you upgraded to the OLED and you didn't end up selling your LCD, I don't want to advocate for taking it apart and creating your own mini PC, but seeing ETA Prime do it, it kind of makes me want to do it, you know? Like, it just seems like such a cool thing to have living on your desk, but uh, the first thing I would do is 3D print a little case for it so that the ports and the motherboard and everything are enclosed so they don't get covered in dust and dirt and grime from just sitting wide open on your desk, you know what I'm saying? I'll link the video down in the description, it'll be at the very bottom. Anyway, 
anyway, guys, that's all I've got for you in today's video. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.